Citizens speak out as people stand up for themselves and loved ones in an effort to bring improved living conditions and greater basic freedoms to their lives. They continue to gather in countries like Australia, Egypt, Greece, Kenya, Libya, Malawi, Palestine, Syria, United Kingdom, United States, and Yemen. United States. Massachusetts Governor Devold Patrick urged lawmakers on Wednesday, July 20th to allow undocumented immigrants seeking higher education in state colleges and universities to pay the state resident rate, which is as much as two-thirds less than the rate paid by students from outside the state. Meanwhile, hundreds of prisoners at California's Pelican Bay Prison Complex and others across the state are continuing a hunger strike maintained for the past three weeks to protest what they say is the torture of long-term detentions spent in soundproof isolation units 23 hours a day with one hour of movement allowed in a windowless cement pen. Citizens protesting at the state capitol in support of the inmates have called for prison officials to negotiate with them over conditions. Corrections Secretary Matthew Cate announced on Wednesday that he would seek a court order to prevent inmates' deaths through force feeding. Although Nancy Kincaid, Communications Director for the California Prison Health Care Services, stated that prison staff would not go against medical ethics by forcing anyone to eat against their will. United Kingdom. A coroner stated on Thursday that the sudden death of former News of the World informant Sean Hoare is still being investigated, but does not appear to be suspicious. Mr. Hoare was the first to speak out about what he said was the widespread practice of phone hacking by fellow journalists. The Metropolitan Police Authority, also known as Scotland Yard, has also been asked to investigate allegations made by Mr. Hoare during an interview for the New York Times last week, in which he stated that News of the World paid police officers for phone tracking data to locate the whereabouts of the subject of a story. United Kingdom and Kenya. Mr. Justice McComb of the UK's High Court ruled on Wednesday, July 20th, that four elderly Kenyan nationals have the legal right to bring a case against the British government regarding their severe mistreatment in UK-run detention camps following the Mau Mau Uprising, a movement launched by Kenyan tribes against British colonial rule in the 1950s. Despite the significant amount of time that has passed and the fact that the British rule over Kenya no longer exists, the judge found the case to have sufficient merit and has scheduled a hearing for early next year where evidence will be presented and a decision made about proceeding to a full trial. Australia. On Wednesday, Australian police used force, including tear gas and bean bag bullets, to quell a protest of about 50 detainees at the Christmas Island immigration camp. The immigrants were expressing their frustration at the delays and overcrowded conditions as they wait 2,400 kilometers from the Australian mainland for their refugee status to be processed. Greece. As hundreds of taxi drivers demonstrated on Wednesday in the third day of a strike protesting a government proposal to make it easier for new drivers to enter the business, they were dispersed with tear gas after clashing with riot police. Malawi. As riots erupted on Wednesday after a court had banned pro-reform demonstrations, 18 people perished, with 41 who were injured by Thursday. President Bingu wa Mutrika appealed for calm, offering talks to hear the grievances of protesters who have been demonstrating against fuel shortages and economic mismanagement. Palestine. The Palestinian Telegraph reports that 16 people were arrested on Thursday as Israeli forces raided and searched houses in various neighborhoods of the West Bank claiming that the detainees were suspected of plotting against Israel. Egypt. On Wednesday, July 20th, the caretaker military government announced rules for the upcoming parliamentary elections, but said it would not allow international observers to monitor the electoral process. Syria. On Thursday, a resident speaking to Al Jazeera by satellite phone from the city of Homs reported that security forces had raided houses in peaceful and unarmed neighborhoods such as Ba'ab al-Sabah, leveling homes and making arrests, while random shooting could be heard throughout the city. With human rights activists reporting that 50 people have been killed in the past few days, amateur video showed empty city streets with shops closed as residents stated that the heavy gunfire made them fear leaving their homes, even to rescue the injured or retrieve the dead. In addition, activists and residents report that Syrian security forces on Wednesday entered Harasta, a Damascus suburb, with 150,000 residents and after cutting off electricity, water and telephone lines, began arresting dozens of people. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon expressed deep concern at the escalating violence as he urged the country's government to stop the repression immediately, reiterating his call for a credible, inclusive dialogue to resolve the turmoil. Yemen. A medical team speaking to CNN on Thursday said that a child had been killed, with at least three others wounded, when government troops fired upon protesters in the city of Taiz. As we mourn the precious lives lost, as well as the injury and distress of many others, we pray for the strife in all countries to cease, with world citizens deciding to live in shared safety, dignity and peace.